This is one of multiple videos where I discuss NAT or network address translation. In this video, I'm answering a question from Pedro, who's attending my GNS3 CCNA course. The link to the course can be found below this video. Pedro, thanks for the question. Here's the answer. In this GNS3 topology, I have three Cisco IOS routers acting as servers. I also have a Cisco IOS router acting as a PC, and we'll configure a fifth Cisco IOS V router with NAT to allow the client to access the three servers on the internal network. Now, all I've done here is configure IP addresses on the devices. I've also configured a default gateway on the servers to point to the NAT router, but the client router has no routing enabled. So here is router three acting as the client. Show IP route shows us that there are no routes in the routing table except connected and local routes. No gateway of last resort is set. There's no default route. No routing protocols such as OSPF, BGP, or EIGRP are enabled on this router. So if we run a debug IP packet and then try and ping one of the internal servers, this is router one, acting as our first server, what we're told is that the packet is unroutable. The router doesn't know how to get to this destination network. The same is true for any of the other server IP addresses. The PC doesn't know how to get there because there is no routing enabled and it has no route to server one, server two, or server three. Router one acting as server one is configured with a default route pointing to router two, which is acting as the NAT router. It could, as an example, try and ping router three acting as the PC. And you'll notice that the traffic hits the router, but it doesn't know how to return the traffic back to the server. So there's a 0% success rate. In other words, this server sends the traffic to its default gateway, which is this router, who routes the traffic onto this segment. It hits this PC, but the PC doesn't know how to get back again. Now, typically, RFC 1918 addresses are not routable on the internet, because internet routers will block traffic sent from those IP addresses. So what we need to do is configure NAT on this router to allow this PC to access the servers and to allow their traffic to be natted when going onto the outside or the internet. So let's configure router two with NAT. Okay, so this is router two, which is our NAT router. Show IP interface brief shows us the IP addresses configured on this router. Gigabit01 is configured with an IP address in the 8.8.8 .8 .8 range. That is a public IP address used by level three. So here we're pretending that that interface is the outside or the internet facing interface on this router. Gigabit 00, 02, and 03 are using RFC 1918 addresses. In other words, private IP addresses, non-routable on the internet. So what I'll do is configure Gigabit 01 as a NAT outside interface. In this example, I'm using an iOS V router. So we saw a CPU hog message, but the router's come back now. So I'm using a 15.62 version of iOS V. Interface gigabit 00, IP NAT inside. Interface gigabit 02, IP NAT inside. Interface gigabit 03, IP NAT inside. We have to tell the router which interfaces are on the inside, in other words, internal networks, and which interfaces are on the outside or 
internet facing. So what we've done thus far is configure gigabit 00 as an inside NAT interface, gigabit 01 is outside, and gigabit 02 and 03 are inside NAT interfaces. Now we can use the command IP NAT. What are we going to NAT? In this example, we're going to NAT inside addresses. In other words, we are NATing addresses for hosts on the inside of our network. Think of the term inside as belonging to an insider, someone who's inside your organization. I'm an outsider. So I'm on the outside of your organization. You work for a company, perhaps. You are an insider in that company. I, on the other hand, am an outsider to your company. So an inside host is an insider and they have addresses on the local area network. So I'll talk about some terms in a moment, but a local inside address is an address of this host found on the local LAN. In other words, an inside local address is a insider's IP address when found on the local LAN. An inside global address is an IP address that belongs to this inside host found on the global internet. In this example, we want a NAT, an inside host address. In other words, an address that belongs to a host on the inside of our network. In other words, internal to our network. We're going to NAT the source IP address of that internal host. And in this example, we want to use a static NAT entry because we want devices from the internet to be able to initiate sessions to this host. So we asked for the inside local IP address. This is the real IP address of the host. This host is on the inside of our network and it's connected to the local area network. So the inside or local IP address is the physical IP address of that device on the local area network. Now, what are we gonna NAT the address to? In this example, I'm gonna NAT it to 8.8.8.1 that IP address does not exist in the network. So going on to router three, which is acting as our PC in this topology, at the moment it's not able to ping 8.8.8.1 .8 because that address doesn't exist. Notice we're getting encapsulation failed. Show ARP, we're getting an incomplete ARP entry for that host. The PC is not able to discover 8.8.8.1, .8 and that's because it doesn't exist. We're going to create this virtual IP address for that host. Now I'm gonna use extendable to complete the NAT translation. So going back onto router three, are we able to ping that address? Yes, we are. Let me just start, stop the debug. Previously, we couldn't ping this address. We had encapsulation failed. The op was incomplete. But after we created the NAT entry, we could ping 8.8.8.1. .8 so let's do that again. And what I'll do is run a debug on the server. So this is server one, debug IP ICMP. I'll do a single ping from router three, which is acting as our PC. And what you can see here is a source of 10.1.1.1 sent a reply to 8.8.8.1. .8 but the internet device doesn't know that it's talking to 10.10.10.1 .10 because the address is being natted, the internet PC thinks it's talking to 8.8.8.1, .8 and that's because show IP NAT translation shows us on router two, the NAT router, that 8.8.8.1 .8 is being translated to 10.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. 
This is the inside local address. This is the actual physical address of this PC, as we can see here. Here's the address. This is the inside global address. In other words, this is the NATed address of that PC. This is the address of that PC when traffic is sent onto the internet. I hope you found the video useful. If you enjoyed it, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.